All right, hello. It's still day one of production. It's been a very interesting day one. Finding the composer for the score is like a big deal because the, the film's very much built on the structure of the like BPM of the song. And so like last week, I asked my mate Dale, who's a filmmaker, and he'd suggested one of his friends, Kid Koala, the like scratch DJ. that I should consider him. And I was like, oh shit, that's a really interesting and good idea. And then this morning, he sort of sent us a, like a link, like an email introduction of the guy circular sewing. And then fast forward like a few hours later and I'm like at Kid Koala, Eric, I should just call him Eric, Eric's studio. And we're just discussing the film and the project. This fucking guy doing a bit of a circular saw. Crazy thing is, turns out Kid Koala lives two blocks from my house. It's like a six minute walk to go and see him. <laughs> so it's one of those weird, I think of the words ki kismet, kismet. It's like a fate kind of thing, maybe. Okay, g'day, Simon Cuddy here again. Week two production vlog for the Pioneers. Got a Canadian uh, East Coast heat wave going on. So we're keeping cool in the pool, having fun in the sun. I'm here with my little buddy, Boa the dog. Boa. There we go. I got some notes for this one. Hopefully it won't be 20 minutes long. Step one, we've collected the data. Some, we've got some holes in our data still, but we've got pretty much all of the launches. Correct animals assigned. Though we are missing some of the Russian animals that went up with the dogs. The next exciting step is regarding the music. Kid Koala is doing the music for the film. He's worked a lot in film. He's worked with people like Edgar Wright on things like Baby Driver. He's collaborated with a, a lot of people. So I was really stressing about the music because for me to build the film, the structure of the music is very important in terms of the edit. I had a very clear vision on how the structure should work to a, a certain BPM. Kid Eric, we, we had a great chat and he was really understood the concept and the idea. Then fast forward from the Monday to the Wednesday, he's like, hey, you wanna come in and see what I've got here? And he already had a, a sort of working version, a draft version of the music and it was super cool and we went over it with some tweaks and changes and then on the Thursday, he called me back in. He's like, hey, I got some new stuff and we had a new version uh, that I'm gonna be using for my sort of animatic version and then we'll work on it again later uh, after he, he's going on a tour of Europe at the moment so when he gets back we can try and sync it better to what will be the the more finished animatic here's a little sample of it wow sounds great Boy, right, what are you doing all right very cool now we're building what I'm calling I'm coining this word it's called a factomatic. So an animatic is a rough version of the film that you basically will build your animation on top of. And a factomatic, I've created all these images as stuff you can see here and, and sourced a lot of um, historical rocket footage and test footage. And I'll build a version of the film that's using just images and rocket footage. So that way I don't have to sit and draw and stress about anything. I can really just bust out an animatic very quickly by just dropping in elements and timing it to the music. So that's what I'm on now. And I've broken the film up into three acts. I always find that important as well, because then I can sort of think of separate flavor for each of the acts as well. So the idea for this film is the first act will be to set up a pattern, a repetitive pattern. The second act will be to play with that pattern. Once the audience is used to it, to then modify it and play with it and get a bit more abstract. And then the third act will be kind of a bit more narrative and a bit more wacky and archy. Uh, that's another thing that I've been really uh, having some struggles with is, it's like in my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm making this documentary. And with making a documentary comes a real burden of having very correct information, right? Well, it shouldn't be a burden, but it is. It's tough. It's tough to track down information, especially when the USSR's space program, they didn't really keep track of their info very well. And there's like a billion different dogs that have all been mislabeled online. 
so I've been I was stressing a lot about this and then my wife Fanny she was like Simon you're not making a documentary you're making an animation like you're drawing everything like even then it, it, it can't be completely factual and I was like oh yeah you're right and then I'm like I want to make the best film the best viewing experience I can I'm not trying to make a, a a resource for schools to use or something. I want to make a cool film that you can sit and enjoy. And so then in my mind, it's sort of become more of an art project, you could say, like an art film than a documentary film. It's all based on historical fact, and it's going to be as factual as I can kind of get it, you know? Well, if it's the, the rocket that I'll be presenting will be the correct type of rocket, but it might not be the correct footage that I'm, I've you sourced for the launch or things might be a bit off sometimes so for me to free myself from the shackles of factual documentary so that's, I guess that's pretty much it here's Boa she's here with me cool enough in the summer so yeah this week will be to try and get my factomatic ready and then next week we'll be getting the actual sort of animated more artistic -y version together while I'm also editing this so-called factomatic that's been it that was the vlog. Peace. Peace and love. Alright then. Bye bye. See you later.